Welcome to our devotional study today of the book of Genesis. We are in Genesis chapter 30, and uh, the early part of Genesis chapter 30 was all about Jacob's family. And now as we come into the latter part, it is all about Jacob's finances. It's about his contract with Laban. And uh, as we come into these verses, we're going to find that uh, working for Laban was a real trial for Jacob. Uh, Laban was not a good employer. Uh, he had problems paying the due salary, as we have, uh, uh, as we've already seen a little bit in, in Genesis chapter 29. And here in the last half of Genesis chapter 30, what we find is another contract that Jacob uh, has with Laban to compensate Jacob for his labor. So with that in mind, I want to read Genesis chapter 30, and we're going to read verses 25 and uh, down through here for a ways. And it says there in Genesis 25, or 30, verse 25, And it came to pass, when Rachel had borne Joseph, that Jacob said unto Laban, Send me away, that I may go unto mine own place and to my country. Give me my wives and my children, for whom I have served thee, and let me go, for thou knowest my service, which I have done thee. And Laban said unto him, I pray thee, if I have found favor in thine eyes, tarry, for I have learned by experience that the Lord hath blessed me for thy sake. And he said, Appoint me thy wages, and I will give it. And he said unto him, Thou knowest how I have served thee, and how thy cattle was with me. For it was little which thou hadst before I came, and it is now increased unto a multitude. And the Lord hath blessed thee since my coming. And now when shall I provide for mine own house also? So as we come into these verses today, verses 25 through 30, um, we see that after Joseph's birth, Jacob desires to return to his own land. And that desire begins to come out in verses 25 and 26. Jacob wants here uh, to go back to Canaan. Uh, that involved faith, because if you remember correctly, going back to Canaan meant facing his brother who wanted to kill him. Uh, it meant uh, going through and facing up to the difficulty that uh, he was a part of while he lived there, the deceit, the trickery, uh, and all of that. Uh, it was, but at the same time, it was the land that God had promised to Jacob. And uh, Jacob remembered that. He remembered that it was God's promised land, and he wanted to be in that land that God had promised to him. The request here that Jacob makes in Genesis chapter 30, verses 25 and 26, indicates that Laban had once been delinquent about paying Jacob his salary. And Jacob had served his time for his two wives, and now Laban must release him or negotiate a, good, a new contract with him. And uh, he was doing neither. Keep in mind that as we stop and we think about this, that... Uh, it's very important for us to understand that uh, Laban had made a contract with him once upon a time. That contract was for Rachel, and then he gave her, him Leah instead of Rachel. And certainly, uh, Jacob has seen that Laban is not one who he should regularly trust. And Jacob, or Laban has sought to deceive Jacob in the past, and to a certain degree we've mentioned that this is the chickens coming home to roost, so to speak. Uh, Jacob has been the one who has been a deceiver, and now that the shoe's on the other foot, Jacob doesn't like it all that much. It's interesting how people don't mind deceiving other people, but they don't like being deceived. And that's exactly what we see here when it comes to the life of Jacob. And then, um, we notice that Laban mentions his blessings in his offer of wages in verses 27 and 28. It says in verse 27, Terry, for I have learned, notice this, I have learned by experience that the Lord hath blessed me for thy sake. He says, I acknowledge the fact that the blessing of God is upon me, that the blessing of God is upon my family. And the reason why that blessing is there, Jacob, is it's because of you. It's for your sake. And Laban did not want to lose Jacob because he didn't want to lose the blessing of God. Jacob had proven to be a great benefit for Laban, and Laban did not want to lose him. And uh, this request by Laban was certainly a compliment for Jacob, 
for it indicated that Jacob was a good worker, and it indicated that the blessing and the confirmation of God's blessings were there because of Jacob. And then we see, as we come into uh, you know Jacob's plan here, uh, call for him to receive, um, as we're going to notice, call for him to receive the odd coloring animals that were born in the future for himself. And we're going to see that tomorrow as we look into verses 30 through 36. Laban knew well that Jacob had served him. Notice uh, verse 29, Jacob says to Laban, he says, listen, you've been deceitful to me, uh, but you know that I have served you faithfully. You know that I have worked faithfully for you. In Genesis 30, 29, it says, thou knowest how I have served thee. And indeed, Laban knew very well how Jacob had served him. Jacob was no lazy, irresponsible digby. He was a hard worker, and Jacob's industriousness demanded a very good contract. He proved that he was reliable. Let me let me remind you, friend, that we need to be a good employee in the workplace. We must be um, a person of value in our home. Uh, and also, at the same time, we need to understand that God knows how we're serving him that he knows if we're serving him from the heart or not, that he knows whether or not we're trusting in him and one day we'll be rewarded according to our labor. We see also in verse 29, the integrity of Jacob when Jacob says, thy cattle was with me. This is reminding Laban that he could leave his livestock in the care of Jacob and he knew that Jacob would provide good care for them that he would make sure they were fed. He would make sure they were watered. He would make sure that any of the sick ones were taken care of. Jacob had been a very trustworthy worker. And Jacob's integrity that he has increases his value. I trust that the kind of worker that you are, the integrity that you have, increases your value in the place that God has put you in. And then we see the increase that came through Jacob in verse 30. It says, it was little, when thou hags, it was little which thou hags before I came, and it is now increased unto a multitude. We see here that Jacob had benefit, benefited Laban very much. Uh, he had made Laban a very prosperous man. He had increased Laban's possessions. He helped Laban's business really grow. And that's the kind of employee that a person ought to be. We, as a Christian, a person who is a Christian needs to be a good employee for their employer and uh, one who gives an honest day's work for an honest day's pay. And then we see in the end of verse 30, you notice know, this. It says there, when shall I provide for my own house also? Jacob's reminding Laban. Laban, we haven't had, con we haven't had contract talks in a while about what I was going to make for working for you, And if you remember correctly, Jacob's got a very big family now that is his responsibility to take care of that family. It was his responsibility to adequately provide for them. And Jacob knew that, and because of that, he understood that he needed a contract to provide enough for him to provide for his family. He wasn't, it certainly doesn't look like he was trying to be greedy in this whole thing. He just had a genuine desire to take care of his family. And that is something that is admirable. You know, uh, if one does not provide for his own household, um, the Bible says that is very telling on that person's character. So we learn very much from the industriousness of Joseph, of Jacob, rather. And we ought to have that exact same desire in our lives to be a good worker, um, to be a person of integrity, not only in the workplace, but in every place that we go. And um, that our reputation that we have there as an employee would uh, show forth the truth that we are children of God, that we belong to him, that we're Christians and that we live like Christians. And that's so important in this day and age that we live in, that the children of the court, the children of the king, should ever display the manners of the court. We need to remember to whom we belong, to whom who we represent in this world, and we need to represent him well. And that ought to be our desire as the people of God. Let me ask you today, are you concerned about what you want, or are you concerned about what God wants? Friends, 
It's our goal. It ought to be our goal in life to honor and glorify him above all else. Have a great day.